Hey guys, it's Chris from Survive and Thrive. Today what I'm going to be going over is called the sheep shank knot, which as you can see right here, that is the actual sheep shank knot. Um, the purpose of it is to shorten rope. If you want to tie it from point A to point B and your rope is just way too long, instead of having to wrap it a thousand times around the tree or come and loop back to this tree or pole or whatever, you can just use this simple knot to take out some slack in your rope. So I'm going to show you how to tie that in just a second. Okay, so today we're going to be tying the sheep shank knot. So, as you can see, I have my rope. We're not going to be using the tail ends like we have on most of the knots I've been showing you. We're actually going to be using more of the center of the rope, where you actually want to take the slack out of the rope. So, the first step, what we're going to do is taking our left hand, we're going to make a loop towards our right hand, just like that. So the rope is, the, where the tail end is, is actually coming over the top of the rest of the rope. Now we're going to pinch and hold that loop just like that. And then we're going to take our right hand and we're going to make a loop coming behind the rope. So see how it's crossing behind through our rope. And make it bigger. This is the actual amount basically you're going to be taking out of your rope. So you want to make it a little bigger than your starting loop. And then using your left hand, just slide the knot in your hand. Pinch both loops. And then taking the tail end that was just in your right hand, or the rest of your rope, this rope's a little small, so I'm going to make my middle loop a little smaller. What we're going to do is we're going to make another loop crossing behind the rope, just like we did the last one, the big one in the middle. So now, let's see if I can get this panned out. Now what you should be left with is two little loops on the outside and a big one in the middle. It's exactly what your rope should look like. Okay, so go back to pinching this. Now what we're going to do is taking the last loop we just made, we're going to fold in like this. So the part that's crossed behind, see how our tail ends right here? We want that to be facing our loop, our inner loop. Now once it's like that, we want to take our finger, feed it through, and just grab some of that big loop and pull it through. Just like that. And now we're going to do the same thing on this side, only instead of going backwards, we're going to actually rotate the knot, the loop towards us. We're going to twist it towards us. So the tail end is inside. Oops, let me see. Let me just show you that. See how it's crossing over the top? We want to put the tail end inside. And then we're going to do the same thing and grab some of our big loop and pull it through that one. So now once we have it, it should, you should have it almost like this. Just like that, with a big loop coming through the little loops. Then what you're going to do is pull big loop a little thinner. And you're going to grab your tail ends of the rope and actually tighten them outward. Pull them outward. So your knot should finish looking something like this. So when you pull on it, as much as I pull and shake, or pull any tension on that it stays in place that's what you want when you're shortening your rope now an easy way to untie this is see how the loop comes through this like clasp if you want to call that all you have to do is take this rope see how it's the part of the loop and just pull it out like that and the whole knot comes undone all right so i'm going to show you one more time a little slower so we get the middle of our root, rope, and we're going to make a loop over with our left, going from left to right, just like that. Here's our tail end, so it's crossing over the top of the rope. Then we're going to make a bigger loop in the middle, crossing, coming with our right hand going behind the rope. So it creates this bigger loop, and we got a small loop, a big loop. And then we're going to pinch both those knots in our left hand so they don't undo on us. And then we're going to do the same thing crossing behind with our right. So now we get our three loops. Then taking this loop, the last one we made, rotate it away from us. Grab the loop of the big one and just hold it. Now taking the first loop we made, we're going to rotate it towards us and grab some of the big loop, pull the big loop through, and then just 
you're gonna pull those loops like that, but see how I let go? Let me speed that up, speed back up to that thing. I let go of the inner loops when I was here. Instead of pulling these inner loops through like I did the first time, I thought I could get away for a second. I thought I had enough of the loop to do that, but I didn't. So that's something you wanna keep, a, keep an eye on when you're tying this is to make sure this loop stays through. So you can just keep your index fingers in it like this and pull. And then once you get to that point, you should just be able to pull as tight as you want. And now I just successfully shortened my rope that was about two and a half feet to maybe a foot and a half with just that one knot. So if I needed to get it from point A to point B and my rope was too big, I can shorten it. And that is the sheep shank. Okay guys, so today I showed you how to tie the sheep shank. Um, when tying this knot, uh, if you're going to tie it in your rope to shorten it, you want to do it before you get the rope up on the line, unless you have a lot of slack in your rope. Because most of the time you can't tie this in already tied rope. Uh, you just don't have enough slack to actually create the loops and pull everything through. You can, I, it's, I've seen it done, people can do this, but you do need a lot of slack in your rope. Otherwise, it's going to become extremely difficult and it's not worth your time. In that case, you'd probably want to do something like making a trucker's hitch instead and just be able to tighten the rope on itself. But, uh, yeah, if you're going to use this knot, I would just use it before you tie your rope up. Like if you get one end on the tree and you're going to the other one, you realize you have like three feet left over or something. If you don't want a tag end hanging off, you can just quickly go in and tie that. Uh, sheep shank and then just finish connecting your rope so that's really one of the, the only use for this knot also I'll just demonstrate again it's a very simple untie if I just take this piece right here any of these outside pieces and I just pull it I can undo it and then I have my rope slacked up and it makes it easier to untie my knots if I'm using it for a ridge line or anything like that also just show you quick with the uh, sheep shank you can actually use the loops right here when you tie this. These loops right here, you can actually use these as hooks or anchors for things because with your baseline or ridge line, whatever you want to call it, tied tight, if you anchor something here, this isn't going to untie the knot. It's actually going to hold its own. It's not going to let go. So you can hang stuff from it. Yeah, maybe you want to tie some extra rope. Uh, you have, if you have, uh, your sheep shank in the end of your ridge line, you can attach your tarp to it. So there's multiple uses. You can get creative with it, with, as with every other knot. You can just get creative. Um, but yeah, that is the sheep shank. Uh, thanks for checking out my videos. Um, you can move on. Once you get this knot down, you can move on to the next video. Um, I'm actually going to put these uh, knot videos up in some kind of order of how I'm going to teach things. So. Uh, if you're new and you've never tied knots before, you don't know how to tie knots, you might want to just follow it in order. It might help a little bit because I'll explain things in one video and then assume you've watched the other one. I'll do a brush up on it and I won't go into detail about it. So yeah, thanks for checking me out. Uh, make sure to check out some of my other videos. If you have any questions, comments, anything like that, videos you'd like to see, uh, I'll have an email in the description of this video along with all my other ones that you can email me and I'll try to get back to you within 24 hours if possible. Uh, so yeah, once again, thanks for checking out the channel and I uh, hope to see you around.